So far with our fur brushes, I've shown you how to make all of these right here that are above my little marker. So we're doing pretty good. I will probably not show you all of these. These two in particular just didn't come out very well. And I'm not even sure what that last one is, but I'll look into it and see. What we're going to try today is to replicate this K fur 14. And if we look at it, the shape which we can see right here, is basically a bunch of squiggly lines. Nothing really excessive, just squiggly lines. And it looks to me like I made these back here and then I blurred it by 10%. And then I would have made the ones up here and then blurred by 10%. So we're going to try that. Um, now let's click done on this. Delete that screenshot. So let's go into our calligraphy. We're going to go down to the model line. And I've got it set for 31%. Let's make our brush color white and our background color black. And we're going to start making squiggly lines. And once again, these aren't going to be too obvious squiggles, just a bunch of squiggles. And not all of them are connected top to bottom. I'm using my right hand. And I'm holding my Apple Pencil pretty far away, almost at the end. So I'm not getting a really steady line. So let's go up here to the Magic Wand. And we'll go down here to Gaussian Blur. And we will slide our Apple Pencil or finger to about 10%. And then we'll tap on that magic wand again. And we'll make some more squiggles. I don't really like that one. It has a little check mark there. Yeah, there we go. Just making a bunch of squiggles. Nothing really earth shattering. And we'll do the magic wand again. And Gaussian blur. And we'll put that Gaussian blur once again to 10%. And that sort of looks like the one that we had for brush 14. So let's go here to the hair and fur so that we will be ready. I'm going to copy my layer one, start up a new layer, and in our hair and fur, I'm going to click on the plus sign. And I'm going to make the shape, edit, import, paste, the one that we copied. I'm going to click on done. And rotation, of course, is going to be follow stroke. Rendering, we're going to use intense glaze. Apple Pencil, I'm going to put all the way down to none on the opacity. In the properties, I'm turning off the orient to screen. And I'm making the maximum size 400. And that gives us this really fuzzy brush. Let's give that a done and that a done. And it's pretty dense. I don't think I want it that dense. 
let's bring this up to say 38 percent on the spacing for the stroke path and let's try that yeah I think that is what we had let's bring this down to 30 percent we'll put a swipe there let's go up to my old fur and hair brush that's fairly comparable I kind of like that so this brush here I'm just gonna call fur 14 and we're going to create a reset point now I have learned a few things since I started making brushes such as if we go to the color dynamics and we add a secondary color then what this does for us is our primary color is the color we are currently using so that's this one here the secondary color is the one that we used last which in this case was also a white but it was based in red instead of in blue go figure let's make that secondary color a medium gray So basically I've got this up here in the blues and it says that it's cyan blue and we'll tap here on the primary color which is the white and we're going to test this out. that's not bad at all so we've gone through real quick we've created a brush and I think it works very well once again you can create a second brush if you duplicate it and go to the shape edit and turn it 90 degrees and when we click on done and done we get this and that gives us an initial of that direction for some reason but then it goes down this way and if you want you can hold it until it snaps do all sorts of weird things with it but since you're going to be going several ways away like this it shouldn't make any difference you can also set a scatter on the brush to get a different texture this one actually looks a little bit like cross hatching and you can do other things with it you can change jitter you can give it a fall off you can even give it a grain if I give it this grain right here then that changes our brush completely Oh, that's the eraser there we go it changes the brush completely so play around with it 
figure out what it is you want to do. You can always make that back to blank. And you've got that. So now I'm just going to clear everything out. And let's do that speed paint that we saw at the beginning. I hope you enjoyed this very quick tutorial and you have a wonderful day.